broken like the first morning. Blackbird has spoken like the first bird. Praise for the singing. Praise for the morning. Praise for the springing. Fresh from. Sharon there who's doing our AV, to Tony who is making sure that when you go to the car park, you don't only have the keys in your hand, there's actually a car standing there also. <laughs> Some of us will know about it, eh? myself included. And uh, then also our ladies who are serving us uh, with tea, that is um, Ms. Jen and Margie and Sandy and others. So thank you to all of those who are just giving support to, to the service at the moment. Let us pray. Lord, you know us by, by name. And the same with Shenna and Blaine and Lillian and Claire and uh, Jenna and Greg and Heath and Espen and Cameron and Barbara and all family and friends of Carol, especially at such times. You are close to those who are brokenhearted, who are in need, who, who feel, O oh God, their hearts heavy. You are there, O oh God. I pray that at this time, that, O oh Lord, they will feel your real support in wonderful ways, through people, through events, through thoughts, through circumstances, Lord, that all just come together and point to the fact that, yes, the Lord is with us and is helping us through this tough period in our lives. Without you, Lord, we cannot do anything. And what we do in the service and are going to do, O oh God, is not dependent upon human beings alone, but first and foremost, upon the leading and the support and the guidance of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We pray that this service, Lord, amongst many other things, will serve, Lord, as, as a form of and as a source of comfort to the family and friends of Carol. We pray that through the service, O oh God, we shall be uplifted and be filled with hope about the present and about the future. We ask your blessing upon every prayer, upon every tribute, O Lord, spoken or via media. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Yes. The children are listening. And that's a compliment if they can actually follow you. Because they find it difficult to follow adults speak, eh? Um, we now going to have tributes, and the first one is by Shanna. <coughs> Thank you all for being here today. Before I begin, I'd like to mention a few people who without, uh, would not have made it through. To Barbara, you were my mom's business partner for 25 years. And so you two have been a part of my life for that time. Thank you for being there for mom every step of the way and trying your best to help her. I will forever be grateful to you for the support and love you have given me and in turn my mom. 
Auntie Laws and Auntie Kim. Thank you for sleeping in and always going above and beyond for mum. It has been extremely difficult being away during this time when I feel like mum needs me the most. You were her first friends, her sisters, and she loved and adored both of you in different ways. Pillars of strength to each other. You all set the standard of what it means to offer unwavering support to one another. To Greg, Heath and Aspen, thank you for being so understanding during the most difficult time in my life. I have been absent and I'm trying to find my way back in this new reality of mine. I wouldn't be able to do it without you. To blame. Boy, as we climb this mountain of grief that faces us, know that I'll always be there for you. Thank you for taking care of mom and letting her the way you did. She was very proud of you. Okay, <clears throat> mom. I have anticipated that this day would come so soon. I feel like I've been shortchanged. I only got 37 years with you. But in that time, you gave of yourself unconditionally. A person doesn't realize how much of your own existence is defined by another until they're not there. Mom, the impact you've had in my life is immeasurable. You were kind, generous, selfless, supportive, gentle, resilient, capable, cheerful, beautiful, and an absolutely true warrior. Life threw many curveballs at you, but you always got up and you fought back. In turn, you have taught me resilience and what it means to get up when you get knocked down. Growing up, we didn't have much, but what you gave was your all and that was enough. You chose to put Lane in our first, and because of that, I admire you and I thank you. I wouldn't be who I am if it wasn't for you, my ultimate cheerleader. You understood me, and you always believed in me. A true testament to your character and supportive nature is the lifelong friends you have. You have passed this trait down to me, and there is honestly nothing better than having friends to journey through all of life's phases with. Bev, Kathy, Susan, Kiki, Glenn, Glennis, Jen, Joel, and many others. Thank you all for playing an integral part in my mom's life. You were such a creative soul. Your talent fast past surprised anyone I've ever met. Sewing, so painting, embroidery, knitting, crocheting, interior design, you even built a couch. I love trying new things with you, from making jewellery and taking up scrapbooking to drawing on mugs and making wreaths. Growing up, you made all of my dance costumes and formal dresses. You then went on to make my wedding dress, which I will forever keep and hold on to as a very precious memory. My childhood is riddled with wonderful memories of weekends away and having the best fun with family and friends. I will never forget the trips to the Eastern Transvaal and the farm. You were always up for a party. All the brides at Bev's house, the late nights and great music. I honestly wouldn't change it for anything. In my adult life, you became my best friend and companion. You were there whenever I needed you. I am so grateful that you were there long enough to meet Keith and Aspen. With Greg working away so much, you were my and so played a huge part in both their lives. They both absolutely adored their game day, as you did them. I will treasure the memories we made, and I will try my best to keep you a constant in our lives. Mom, my hope in this life is that I can be half the woman you were. Your voice inspired me, and I'm my true role model. You were here for it. You are remarkable. You fought hard and tirelessly these last two years. Now it is your time to rest. I know you were tired, and I have a peace and knowingness that this was your soul's desire. Find how my beautiful mommy, with the angels in the sky, I will see you again.
every day. Do I feel even in my heart? do my tribute first, okay? My beautiful creative friend and my partner in crime, that was aka fun, Carol and I met at Springs Girls High in 1969. Innocent girls in green excited about high school. We remained friends while life was happening and met up when our kids were at nursery school and then again at Sulco Primary. But in 1991, Carol and I seriously reconnected as single moms on a mission. The mission was to have fun with our kids. We became the witches from the east with our monsters. We had so much in common. We shared a love of music and dancing and partying. Anywhere, anytime. We even joined Flex Appeal shake our booties. <laughs> that was the local gym and started working out in our matching leotards and sweatbands. We were so cool. <laughs> the, feisty richer, uh, with the, the feisty witches soon recruited another member, witch number three, Kirsty. What a trio we were. We shared so many fun adventures with our children and fabulous friends. Camping trips to the Eastern Transvaal where we swam in rivers, did rock jumping, tubed over rapids, you'll hear more about that one, fished and rode motorbikes. Holidays in Kaimath were also filled with excitement and special memories. Trips to the trans guy on the back of the wooden jigger, brying at the river, and dressing the guys up for the drag Kai beauty pageant in our bikinis. There was always so much humor. We were broke most of the time, but that didn't stop us having fun. Trips to the double feature at the Springbuck Drive-In were a hit. Two moms, five kids, homemade popcorn and snack ridges, Oros, and of course Old Brown Sherry, all in one station wagon. We lived life to the fullest, making wonderful memories with our monsters. Carol was extremely creative. Her creative talent and attention to detail were remarkable. Whether she was creating a stunning we wedding dress, or a matric farewell masterpiece, or embroidery, floral bouquet, whatever, her love for creating shone through. A newly designed office or home space was always an exciting adventure for my friend. She rose to meet every challenge. Even when her health was failing, she was so extremely brave. Carol's love and support and devotion for her children was paramount. Shanna and Blaine, you made your mom so very proud. Let her light shine through in all that you do. Fly high, Carol. Rest, pain free and easy, my beautiful friend. I'm going to miss you so much. I will treasure our memories forever. Love you madly. Love Bear, Brandon, Karen, Jade, Kurt, Cam, and the twins. Okay. Okay, this is from Janice and Carl, our friends in the Eastern Transvaal. Our dearest Shanna Blaine, family and friends, we offer you all our sincere condolences on the sudden loss of your beautiful mother, grandmother, and dear friend. We had the privilege of meeting Carol in the early 90s. She was always so beautifully dressed and made up, a true lady. With her beautiful appearance came a wonderful nature and character as well. She was a gentle soul with a soft voice and a very kind disposition. She was an awesome hands-on mom to Shanna and Blaine and wholly involved in every area of their lives. 
She was a super talented seamstress and turned out the most amazing dresses. Carol was also a dynamic businesswoman with a goal, an aim and a purpose. She conducted her business with integrity and respect and enjoyed excellent relationships with her clients. Sorry. I remember well the little nursery rhyme she taught my kids. And this is for people from Aspen now. Monkey, monkey, sitting in a tree. I see you and you see me. Hang by your fingers, hang by your toes, but don't fall down on your pretty pink nose. <laughs> I'm sure you remember that one, Blake. The kids loved it and sang it often. We have so many wonderful memories of Carol over the years. On one camping weekend, that was in Dubazi, she and Carl shared a tube going down the river. Unfortunately, it did not turn out to be the smooth ride as the tube, the tube went over a rock, shot Carol off, and when she landed, Carl landed on top of her and her face hit a rock. She sported a black eye for over a week and had to wear sunglasses to work every day. But that didn't faze her. It just, she took it in her stride. Carl was terribly sorry and tried to make amends for the rest of the weekend. She was a good sport about it all. And we even had a good laugh later. I don't think I ever saw her angry. Carol, we all miss you and dearly would have you back in a heartbeat to continue riching all of our lives. If I know you, you won't be resting, but you'll be as busy as a bee, blessing all around you. You may be gone, but you will never be forgotten by those who loved you so dearly. The Carl, Janice, Jared, and Megan. Okay, and this is from Jen Cannon in the UK. The Cannon family would like to extend our deepest condolences to Shanna, Blaine, Lily, and Claire, and families. Carol and I have been friends for 45 years and shared so many special memories together, highlighting our six-week backpacking trip through Europe in 1977, our 10-day Starlight Christmas cruise to Reunion in 1990, my maid of honour at my wedding, and so many more amazing times together. Carol had so many beautiful qualities, both inside and out. I will cherish the wonderful loyal friendship that we shared for so many years, I miss our daily chats and video calls. You'll be sorely missed and forever in my heart, my darling Carol. Fly high with the angels, my beautiful friend. Rest in peace. Love, Jen Cannon. And there's one from Mandy and Keith. Dear Carol, I'm so sorry we are not able to attend the final celebration of your life. And a celebration it must be. To quote, your actions were always kind. A generous hand and an active mind, anxious to please and loath to offend, a loving mother, grandmother, sister and friend. We will all miss you very much. Love, Mandy and Keith. And this is from Glenn in America. My dear friend Carol, how I miss your gentle spirit. You were a wonderful friend. Love you always, Glenn. And this is from Glennis, who lives in Cape Town. My darling childhood friend, saying goodbye this soon feels wrong. I loved you for who you were in my life, always kind-hearted, generous and caring. I was truly blessed through your friendship, gone but not forgotten. Rest peacefully, my friend. Love, Glennis. This is from Susan. Dearest Carol, loved you since... Oh, sorry, I just need to sort our pages here. Sorry. <laughs> Here we are. Dearest Carol, loved you since 1971. You, Glenneth and Kathy, were always knitting or crocheting and never had idle hands at school break time. You made me look stunning as a cheerleader and I wore my outfit many times after sports day. You cooked so many fabulous lunches for our reunion days and never complained. If you weren't cooking for us, We'd meet at, re at a restaurant and always had such wonderful times together. You, Kathy, and I had the best break in the Midlands, and I will always remember that with the greatest love. Thank you for being a part of our 1973 matric class and for all the greatest fun times we spent together. 
Rest in peace, my friend. You were taken from us far too soon. Okay, right. I'm going to need to take a big breath before I do this next one. This is from Pix. Okay. Kiki wrote this about her friend. The most wonderful friend I had in Carol. On a dark and stormy night, yes it really was, we were all sitting in the lounge of Carol's parents' house. We were all teenagers listening to Rodriguez and Santa Santana, Santana, Santana. Carol, Jen and I went to the kitchen to make coffee. We chatted about Jen who had just had her ears pierced. I want to do that, I said. And I will do it for you, said Carol. No time to think about it. Carol sterilized a dining needle. She was really good with needlework. <laughs> Gave me some ice cubes to numb my ear lobes, and my brother Rudy held my hand while Carol did the rest. This is the Carol that I knew and loved, open to every challenge, incredibly resilient, and a wonderful loyal friend. Carol, Jen, and I traveled Europe together, had our children at roughly the same time, and they, in turn, are longtime friends. She had an inner beauty which was matched by her outer beauty. She was a pillar of strength to her friends, but even more to her children, Lane and Shanna. She leaves such a void and will be sorely missed. So when tomorrow starts without her, we have to understand that an angel came and took her by the hand. She would have to leave behind her all those she dearly loved, but she hasn't left us. She will always be in our hearts. Rest in peace, my friend. I will really miss you. Love always. Kiki and the Shwana family. This is from Kathy. Today we honour Carol, a loving and gentle soul. The best daughter, mother, grandmother, sister and friend. I'm proud to say she was my close friend. We met at JJ, 1971 and remained friends without losing contact for 51 years. I will miss the wonderful lunches you prepared for us, your, for, your, for us, your school friends, along with the computer and crocheting lessons you gave me. I have no doubt that you have now been appointed to the position of Heavenly CEO of Arts and Crafts Division. <laughs> Please, Carol, don't be late for those lessons. <laughs> Thank you for brightening up our lives. We all feel you were taken away from us too soon. I have many wonderful memories of you. It was an honor and a privilege knowing you. On behalf of Susie, Dennis, Linda, Charmaine, Tisha, and myself, I look down on us, uh, look down on us, sorry, look down on us often, dearest friend. And I know, Linda, oh, sorry, I'm battling here. Look down on us often, dearest friend, and know that we love and miss you. Au revoir, with love. Kathy. Okay, I'll do this one next. And this is from Jose and Bertha, dear Blaine and Shanna, and all of Carol's family. There are no words that I can say to ease how you feel and how your fa our family are feeling. We as a family are still in shock and so hard so. Just knowing that our family get togethers are not going to be the same without you. Carol is a big part of our lives, Granny Carol. Just know, Blaine and Shanna, we are here for you. Carol, thank you for your laughter and bigger than life spirit, honesty and openness, a beautiful soul inside and out. We love you and we're going to miss you so much. From Jose and Bertha. And then the last one here is from Maggie. This is from Maggie Plumstead. Carol was like a second sister to me. She was the bravest, strongest person I have ever known. She always had a positive attitude, despite all that she went through. I'm going to miss our Saturday afternoon teas with our apple crumble and cream and cream and cheese muffins. She had the ability to laugh and make me laugh. She always showed concern for others. We are going to miss you, Mags and family. Next up is Blaine. Right, 
Just bear with me. Always a mommy's voice. This might take a bit of time. Before I start, I'd just like to say a few things. Um, I'd just like to say a special thanks to the Southwood Methodist Church um, for assisting with creating this beautiful memorial service uh, for my mother. A special thanks to Bev for all the reading of messages from friends and from afar. It couldn't have been easier, I know you were very close to my mom. A special thanks uh, to Auntie Lily, Auntie Claire and family for being with us during this very tough time. Auntie Lil's Auntie Claire, I know that this is also hard for you. She was very close to you guys. Uh, a very special thanks to Barbara for being there for my mom in the time of need when she needed you the most on the day of passing. Thank you so much. And then to Mark, I know you still want to say the prayer, but thanks very much. And then uh, a special thanks to my beautiful wife, Jenna, and my precious son, Cameron. Thank you for putting up with me over the last 14 days. I know I haven't been myself. But without you, I could never have worked me through this. And I love you both so much. To my wonderful sister, Shanna. I know this was not part of your trip, to ESA. It wasn't part of your holiday, it wasn't planned. But I'm so grateful that you are here with me, that we are able to go through this hard time together and, su and, and support each other. Mommy and I were always such a tight knit unit and always relied on each other. So for so many things, and I don't think I could have gotten through this without you. I love you always. And then just lastly, a very special thanks to everybody here today and those watching online. You being here today just shows how special my mother was to many people. And I want to thank you all for coming to celebrate my mother's life with us. Come. Now we start. To my beautiful mommy. How am I supposed to cope? How am I supposed to continue? without you in my life. You were my rock, my pillow of strength, my person to reason with. When, he, when, he, when I needed advice, Mom, your sudden, your sudden passing has left a void in my soul that words cannot describe. I miss everything about you, your smile, your laugh, your beautiful face, but most of all, your love. Mom, you were the most amazing person and mother and had such a positive impact on so many people's lives but you had the biggest impact on both mine and Shanna's lives. I remember how involved you were in my schooling career, always helping out at school, school events, but mostly during my band career at Boys High. You were at every competition without fail, sitting tirelessly for hours making our band outfits, creating portfolios for the school for fundraising, giving up your time for me and my school without complaints. Mom, you were one of the most selfless people I know, you were always putting others before yourself. Mom, you dedicated your life to your children to make sure we never went without. You gave so much of yourself for us, and I'm eternally grateful for everything. If there's one thing I can hope for is that in this life, is that I can be as great a parent and person as you were. Mom, I'm so thankful that you got to meet my, my, your grandson Cameron. We were so blessed that you were able to be there on the day of his birth and that you got to spend eight precious months getting to know him. But the hardest part is that he will never get to know you and get to know his special gang gang. And that he's going to have to grow up with, without such an important part of his life. But we will make sure to show him photos and tell him stories of his amazing gang gang. My mommy, I know how tough the last two years have been for you. Being in and out of hospital, undergoing surgery after surgery. And I'm so glad that I was able to be there for you during those times. It makes me feel that I was able to give you just a tiny bit of what you had given us your entire life. My mommy, you are now free of pain, free of stress and fear. You are now able to fly free above the clouds, never having to worry anymore. All I do know is that you were an angel on earth and now you are an angel in heaven. I know you are looking down on us and watching us with Granny and Grandpa. And even though you are not here, I know you are watching Cameron grow up and that you will always be with him. Mommy, fly high, fly free. I love you for your grandmother. Thank you, Brenda, for a beautiful uh, tribute Brenda to Mom. We still call you for tributes, and this time around by uh, AV. Is, um, 
Let me begin with an uh, analogy, illustration. As children, we used to love swings. If you came uh, to a park or somebody's uh, property and they had this thing called a swing, your day was made. There was nothing else you needed to do, not even eat, just a swing. At first, you'd start off very slowly, you kick. Uh, if you've got the neck of it, it won't be a counter kick where you don't move, but you actually get, you know, uh, the gist of it. And um, once you get your rhythm, you kick harder and harder, and the harder you kick, and the more you've got the rhythm, you get the reward of the swing going higher and higher and higher. And the higher and faster it goes, <coughs> the higher and faster you want to go, and hopefully not get into trouble and then you want to stay there. But no matter how long you swing, how high you swing, <laughs> the swing always comes back to where it started. And um, David says, I shall dwell in the house forever and ever. Just like the swing that's got to return where it started off. It's the same with our lives too. You start life off, um, you learn to talk, 
you learn to walk, you go through school, you finish school, you achieve such high things as getting a job, which is a high thing to achieve these days in the present environment. And uh, you maybe get to business and uh, you do very well. Some of us get to live very long. There are some here who are aged 29, was it 92? <laughs> some who, and some don't get to live so long. But no matter how long you live, no matter how, how, how you achieve, how high you achieve in life, you come back to where you started, namely with God. The God who brought you into this life, you return again to Him. Which is not a bad thing. <laughs> it's actually a good thing. Because the one to whom you return to now, you return to the one who, who, who welcomes you with love. And so that love that, that Carol extended to you, Shana, to you, Blaine, uh, to her sisters, to her friends, she's experiencing that love to an extent where if she were to be asked, would you like to go back to where you came from? She would say, well, it, it was nice to be there. It was good. It was great. But I never knew that such a love as the one I experienced right here existed. And my consolation is that even though I cannot go back, I know that when my children, my grandchildren, my siblings, my friends come and join me, they too will agree with me that they have never experienced such a great end. A wonderful love. And for this reason, David then says, I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. I laugh at one of my, my nieces. When my mom passed away, she, she's about 11 years old. She said, oh, shame poor Omi. <laughs> you know what the child like men, as if Omi is now worse off. But it's not the case. Carol, in fact, is in a place where that peace that she should extend to people, she, she experiences that now on a level in which she says, just as well, I try to live my life in peace, or in a peaceful manner, or I was a peacekeeper. Because here, where I am, I begin to understand this is what peace does to a person's heart and a person's life. Because now she's not experiencing peace to the limited extent, extent that you and I know it and will not be able to know it whilst on this earth, but to experience this peace that she extended so generously in a manner that she too could not have imagined. So the long and the short of it is that Carol is an even happier person, even more joyful, excuse me, more fun than she did on this earth. Now that is consolation. We expect a minister to preach that. And because it's the truth. Because God says, I go and I prepare a place for you. And he has prepared that place. And all we do as pastors, ministers, we just confirm that it is so, that she's alive and she's well where she is with the Lord. But now a thing that you mentioned, Blaine, and um, I agree, I agreed with it, is that how do I now live without you? How? How? How does one do it, Shen? How? Because this person played such a big role in your life. And one's life will never be the same. <clears throat> One of the fears you have is, is just as, 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 as you said, is, is 
How? How will one, one cope? Because when the person has passed on, it's as if something has changed forever in that moment. When you hear that news, my son has passed, my daughter has passed, my mom has passed, things change in a moment. Your heart is filled with fear, with sadness, with anxiety, with despair, and many other things. It's a moment that many of us cannot forget. You just cannot forget that moment. You, you, you want to wish it away even. As you look at the photos, you so wish it, you just look at the photos and you'll see mom just now. In, in, in Psalm 23, David says, Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. One of the ways that, that God will most certainly help you to experience what David says, Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. It's written in Revelation 14 verse 11, it says, their works do follow them. You cry in those moments, you, you, you feel despair and darkness taking over when your loved one has passed on because you feel this is the end. But it's not the end. It's not the end. You will still see your mom and the, 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 the life that she lived on this earth, up until the day you too will join her, because her works will follow her. I heard from Beth and I heard also from you in our, in our conversation earlier in the week that she was a person <coughs> who loved to have fun. Now that she has passed on, you will find there will be so many moments in which you, you experience that fun. And at times, at a greater level, even when she was with you. And when that happens, and you become aware of it, then you must say, it is true. The day that my mom passed on, it was not the end and the effect of her, of her life upon my life. But in fact, there is still a continuation of it. And once you have the eyes to see that, and your mind is open to that, there will be times you ask yourself, Shay, is it right of me to be so happy even though my mom has passed on? Is it right of me to be so at peace even though my mom has passed on? And that is the extent to which God will just make her come alive in your lives. It's now 23 years since my dad has passed on. But often I've got to remind myself it's been 23 years because one of the ways in which God just makes that person come to life for you is that often you will dream about your son, about your daughter, about your mom. And there are many here who will testify to it. When that happens, don't just write it off as, I had a dream. But say to yourself, it's true what God says. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And this is one of the ways in God is just extending His goodness and His kindness to me. He is giving the ability to remember my, my mom in the most profound ways, namely through dreams. God will not allow you to forget her. There will be times you ask yourself, was it a dream or was it real? 
And in many, many, many ways, God will show you that yes, she is still alive. And yes, her influence. <laughs> when you find yourself standing in front of the mirror and maybe you're brushing your teeth in a certain manner and your mom perhaps had taught you how to brush your teeth and said, mm, I think I see my mom here mentoring me. All right. If you happen to be busy with some or the other craft, uh, uh, something, uh, you are the one who is creative play. You're busy with one or the other thing there and you do in a way that mom taught you to do. Then you must say, wow, I wonder where's mom? She's busy mentoring here and looking over my shoulder. <coughs> and as you make real connections with people, Shannon, and um, you, you, you are able to be diplomatic and able to attract people to you, then you must say, wow, I see my mom. She taught me how to do this and she's still teaching me how to do this. So is the end, that moment when you hear that person has passed on, I say no. Not by a long, long stretch at all. May the Lord continue to comfort you and strengthen you. Amen and amen. I now invite Mike uh, just to do prayer for us. That's my comment. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, as Rev mentioned, my name is Mike. I've been a friend of Shannon's for many years. And I just want to say, Shannon, that I'm so, so sorry for your loss and, and for the rest of the family. Would you bow your heads with me as we pray together? <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are present here today um, in our time of sorrow. You, O oh Lord, are our great shepherd. You are here with us, your rod, your staff, they comfort us. They comfort us in this pain that is felt so, so deeply. Lord, we know that the days, the months, the years to follow won't be easy, but we thank you that you are the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort who comforts us in our troubles. We look to you for comfort and certainty in times such as this when our hearts are sore. Father, thank you for friends and family members, those loved ones with whom we can share our joy and especially with whom we can share our, our sorrows at times like this. I pray, Father, that Shanna and Blaine and Carol's family will find comfort in the arms of loved ones, of family, friends that you've blessed them with. God, thank you for the gift of life and the enjoyment and pleasure that you give in it. Thank you, Lord, for the life that you gave Carol, for the influence and the impact that she had on each person that is sitting here today. Thank you, Father, for the memories of her that are cherished. Oh, Lord, our eyes are on you. We do not look to another for hope. You are good to those who wait for you, to the souls who seek you. And, Father, to you alone, to you we cry. Remember us now in our distress. Father, thank you that in your Son, Jesus Christ, you have demonstrated your great love for us. While we were still estranged from you, you gave your Son up to die for us on the cross. And we hold on to this as our great hope in life and in death. This we call to mind, and therefore we have hope. Your steadfast love, O Lord, never ceases. Your mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. You alone, O Lord, are a portion, therefore we will hope in you. Father, would your mercies be upon this family, these people here today, and you every morning, and their pastors from here, we pray in Jesus' the most precious name. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Shall we stand with the prayer of commendation? <laughs> Into your keeping, O merciful God, we commend your servant, Carol Henley Merrifield. 
a peacekeeper, a generous person, loved to give, loved to see others happy, try to enjoy life to the fullest, filling with many fun moments as possible. Receive, O Lord, your arms of mercy into the joy of everlasting peace and into the glorious coming of the saints in light through Christ our Lord. People of God say, Amen. Please remain standing for our next hymn, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved.
next up on the podium is uh, Craig Ben, who will uh, read a memorial letter. I feel this would be a message from Carol. Speak of me as you've always done. Remember the good times, laughter, and fun. Share the happy memories with me. Do I live there in the world? I'll be with you in the summer sun and when the winter's chill has come. I'll be the voice that whispers in the breeze. I'm peaceful now, but your mind at ease. I rest with my eyes and gone to sleep. That memories we've made, shared, are yours to keep. Sometimes our final days may be a test, but remember me when I was at my best. Although things may not be the same, don't be afraid to use my name. Let your sorrow last for just a while. Comfort each other and try to smile. I've lived a life filled with joy and fun. Live on now, make it proud of what you will become. The family invites you for tea after the service. It's a straight uh, out of the door. It's not out, it's straight across into the hall there. Please come and join if you can. It's quite a buffet prepared there. I strongly advise you to join. And um, yeah, I think that's about it. Uh, uh, when we go out, I just ask the family to join me, to proceed out uh, first with me, and uh, just stand there, you know, in the, in the foyer, so you can have an opportunity, those who haven't had to do so, just to convey your condolences personally to them. Shall we stay with the benediction? Benediction meaning just blessing one another, and now with the grace of our Lord Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. You us all now in heaven. Um,